How's it going, folks? My name's Chris. I'm a merchandising coordinator here at Right Stuff, and uh, one of the little pet projects we've done sort of behind the scenes, but in plain sight, that you may have noticed we started back in fall is we are carrying Western graphic novels on the site. Um, this has been something that's really been dear to me personally. Before I came to Right Stuff, I worked for over a decade at a comic shop. And so I love manga and I love anime, but I still also love my classic comic books. And so I thought maybe we'd let you folks in today and show you some of the books that I think you should check out, some of our best options in our graphic novel selection, because if you're willing to branch out a little bit, we got a lot of hidden gems that are just amazing. So here's some books that I think you should check out. So when I worked at the comic shop, people would always ask me for opinions of what they should check out if they wanted to try something different. And almost every time, one of my go-to titles was Saga. Saga, written by Brian K. Vaughn, drawn by Fiona Staples, is just such a genre-crossing, amazing piece of story. And it revolves around Alana and Marco. They are a couple that's sort of involved in a Romeo and Juliet style war between the planet Landfall and its moon reef. Alana is a winged soldier who uses high-tech weaponry, and Marco is a horned mage who casts magic spells. And they fall in love, and they have a kid together. And neither of their homelands are happy about this. So instantly they are on the run, trying to figure out how to just live as a family and not get killed. Brian K. Vaughn's got a lot of great story writing expertise. He uh, has written amazing books, Why the Last Man, Ex Machina, uh, Runaways, which was made into a TV series by Hulu. It's just such a crazy world that he's dreamed up. There are starships that you grow from the ground like a tree. Uh, there's ghost babysitters. Uh, a whole clan of TV-headed robot royalty, one of my favorite. There's a uh, pretty much a horse-sized cat that says lying whenever you're lying, so uh, be truthful around lying cat. But seriously, it's, it's an intense, very adult, very cool story that I think everybody can get into in one way or another. It is so worth checking out. Have you ever met the person of your dreams? I mean, literally met them in your dreams. Uh, that happened to Scott Pilgrim, and it probably happened in a good time. He was a really down-on-his-luck guy. He had a crappy job, he was in a mediocre band, and he started dating a high schooler, which is pretty questionable in itself. But one day, he saw a girl rollerblading while he was asleep, and then he met Ramona Flowers in real life. And they kind of hit it off. But the problem is that uh, if he wanted to continue a relationship, he'd have to deal with her baggage seven pieces of baggage coming to get him with weapons and powers and a lot of other things. That's the Scott Pilgrim series in a nutshell. It is a wild, crazy story from Brian Lee O'Malley uh, that borrows just as much from manga as real comics as he says Ranma One Half is a big influence on it. Uh, also a lot of X-Men feeling throughout there, so you sort of get that vibe because he was a big fan of them. Uh, there's this world that he creates is crazy. There's power-ups out in the world. Uh, you beat a guy up and he turns into coins. There's vegans that gain psychic powers. It's just a bonkers world, but it's just as much love for video games and comics as much as they do indie rock and just everyday life. It's about learning to sort of accept people's emotional baggage, if you ask me. And so all of us have had our awkward times in the past. And if you can come to that and appreciate that and appreciate the person behind that, uh, it helps you connect with other people. And I think that's his whole story. And so it's just a blast. You should definitely read Scott Pilgrim. It's one of my favorites of all time. A lot of music fans might recognize Gerard Way as frontman for the band My Chemical Romance, but a lot of people don't realize he's also a big comic creator. He's actually launched his own imprint at DC Comics called Young Animal. Uh, he's had a lot of indie books that have been really popular. But the one thing that people know the most from the comic industry is the Umbrella Academy. This story revolves around a group of children who are virgin birthed at the same time on a fateful day in the 1960s. A philanthropist gathered them together, raised them up to be superheroes, and things didn't go well. There are emotional issues and trauma throughout the team, and they break up after about seven years. But down the road, they are brought together by somebody's untimely passing, and they find out that one of them 
might have some dark plans in mind. It's a really moody, cool book. It captures sort of that nostalgia of the 60s, but also some darkness. It has a lot of Hellboy elements to it as far as the art style goes, a lot of shadow. It's a visually stunning book, and it obviously is a great story. It's been adapted for a series at Netflix that has gone for at least two seasons, so it's a really cool one if that's your vibe. Mark Miller is a big name in the comics industry, partially because he's really good at getting his stories made into movies. Whether it's a big comic superhero stories such as Wolverine, Old Man Logan, or Civil War, or some of his own original stories like Wanted or Kingsman. He's really good at getting his stuff licensed to the point that his own Miller World imprint got bought out by Netflix a few years ago strictly for developing TV shows. One of his most famous adaptations is Kick-Ass. Kick-Ass is one of those classic teen fantasy fulfillment stories. It revolves around Dave Lazuski, who is just a random teenager, he's not popular in school, and he just gets the bug in his head one day to become a superhero. So he buys a wetsuit and some nightsticks, and he goes out on the street and tries to fight crime. And it doesn't go well. It goes really badly, actually. He gets the crap beat out of him. But eventually, he ends up making connections but he also makes bad connections and gets involved with the wrong people and things get really messy for him. The story that Mark Miller writes here just does not make it look like a good idea. And John Romita Jr., who is a comics legend, just reinforces that by just doing such a gritty, visceral job of telling the story. You see every broken bone and every scar in this comic and Dave just looks so downtrodden and beat that maybe you should let the tough guys take care of things. He's not a tough guy. We can't really go too far talking about modern graphic novels without mentioning Watchmen. It rewrote the script on creating the modern comic book. Uh, it came out in 1986 and started an alternate universe where Richard Nixon never stopped being president and superheroes sort of helped that out but at the same time things are still terrible. The world's on the brink of World War III and the superheroes have pretty much been outlawed. But the murder of one of them makes them prominent again, and a guy who goes by the name of Rorschach investigates what happened and finds a lot of hidden things under the surface that could have big impact on the world. This book is a deconstruction of the classic comic book. You've got your superheroes, but they are far from infallible. Some are creeps, some completely lose their connection to humanity because their powers completely displace them mentally, and some just get so drunk on fame that they decide that they can rewrite human history itself. It makes you look back at modern comics and makes you question the fact that these super strong people that have the power of weapons of war, maybe they shouldn't be the ones making the decisions. It's definitely a great study, and it's one of the most influential books of all time, just in general, not just comic books. So. You should definitely read this one at least to just sort of know one of the classics. Here's another good one, Monstrous by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda. This book revolves around the character Micah Halfwolf. She is an Arcanic. Arcanics are a race of creatures on an alternate Earth that have special powers. They usually look pretty odd, but Micah can pass for human. But there's also a ruling class known as the Kumea, who consumes these people and creatures and uses them for magic powers and Micah has found her way to escape. It's cost her her arm, but uh, when she finds other Arcanics, she feels the need to help them out, but she also has a problem. There's a demon inside her fighting for control of her body at all times, and if she loses control and gets lost in battle, the demon can take over, and while it gives her great powers, it also completely blocks her out and allows her to do horrible things. The book really stands out. It's got an awesome world. It's a nice mix of Full Metal Alchemist and Promised Neverland. So there's a lot of fantasy, a lot of demons, a lot of cool steampunk stuff going on. Sana Takeda, she's a Japanese artist that originally worked in video games, has just built a luscious, gorgeous world that is uh, dripping with a lot of sort of eldritch Lovecraftian stuff. It's very oil paint style, and it's just visually stunning. Uh, as you can see from the cover, it's a very unique book. And I think if you're like into horror and fantasy, this is something you're gonna wanna check out. So it may be hard to believe nowadays, but 
A few decades ago, nobody took Batman seriously. The 1966 live-action show with Adam West turned him into a joke, just full of camp and silliness. Everybody remembers the Batusi and Bat Shark repellent, and it took decades for them to recover that character. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. And Frank Miller pretty much did that all in one shot with 1986's The Dark Knight Returns. The comics have been trending to a more gritty, classic detective story, but this finished the job. This is an alternate storyline where Bruce Wayne has grown to the age of 55. It's been about a decade since he was a superhero because he's traumatized. One of his Robins got killed in the line of duty. And a group of gang members called the Mutants kind of overruns the city. And fed up with it, he dons the cowl, gets back out on the street, and just starts beating ass again. But the problem is, uh, a lot of his baggage comes back, a lot of Bruce Wayne's villains resurface, and things get so serious to the point where the president decides to pull Superman off of preventing World War III to try and stop Gotham from collapsing into chaos. The Batman that Frank Miller's created in this story is not the detective you're used to. He's not stealthy, he's not subtle, he's just a big, bulky person who's out to just beat sense into the criminals of Gotham. And it's such a different angle from the Batman you're used to. It's brutal, it's dark, and the art is very stylized and blocky. It's a really cool look that Frank Miller puts in the art. He also drew the book, which you don't see a ton in superhero comics nowadays, so that was something special too. And so it's just definitely his own creative vision on display in this book. All right, well, those are a few of the books that we've got on our website now. That's just a sampling of the graphic novel selection we have now. And we're gonna be working on adding some more. And I, I know there are a few fans out there, they harp on us on social media when we advertise stuff that isn't from Japan. They're just like, oh, this isn't cool. But seriously, if you just branch out a little bit, try and remember from how to read left to right again, you'll find some really awesome stuff. So please give some of these books a try. I think you'll really enjoy them. And if you got some of your favorites that you think maybe we should put on our website, Put it down in the comments. We want to see what you think. So thanks for giving me the time today. Check out some of these books, y'all. You're going to find a treat.